Describe the, uh, I guess the word would be jubilation you expressed after drawing that key charge. Uh, I mean, I just feel the energy, guys. So, I mean, giving a charge and help my team, that, that fires me up. I hope that fires them up and actually play harder. So, taking the charge was big for me. And why was Missouri so good? What did Missouri do defensively today to be so good? Uh, we just played together. Uh, guys were talking on the floor. We were talking in the huddle. Uh, we wanted to win this game. This game very important to us. So we were tuned in from the beginning and we got the outcome we won. Xavier, with a, about a minute left, you were guarding an inbound and an Illinois fan was tripping at you a little bit and you just kind of looked at him and shrugged. What was just going through your head that? Uh, most, I mean, I was just trying to get the win. I mean, I heard what he said. But as a player, I, I can't say nothing. So, I mean, I just was worried about the win and making sure that we won. So I, after the game, I could be able to say something if I seen him. But... <laughs> <laughs> Would you like to say it now? For the most part, I I really don't pay attention to it. I just laugh at all. Javon, what what is it about coming off the bench that just seems to ignite your game? Oh, uh, you know, just making sure that I bring the energy. Um, you know, when I come when I come into the game, uh, just making sure that I will be the best player for my team. Um, whatever they need me to do, I have to go out there and be able to do it. So, um, not really worrying about coming off the bench and starting. Just making sure that I go out there, and, uh, execute the plays, do the little things that I have to do to help the team win. Mitch, a lot of people were saying that you guys would need to hit a lot of threes to win. You didn't hit a lot of threes, but you're still able to win. Just talk about what you guys were able to do offensively. Um, we played hard um, on the defensive end. We did a great. I feel like we did a good job of um, making sure that we were not letting them get into the lane. Everything, most of the things that we worked on, I feel like we went out there and executed on the defense end. But on the offensive end, we went out there, we played together, we made sure that the ball didn't stick. Uh, we Passed the ball a lot. People knocked down the shots. People were cutting uh, to be able to get to the lane. And we also knocked down free throws to get them into foul trouble. Mitch Kopi and uh, Georgie finished with a combined four rebounds. How important was that to get <coughs> shut those two down on the glass and really control the boards? Uh, I mean, they're both good players. Uh, Georgie, he's a glue guy. So, I mean, they, they looked at him to get their offense going and stuff. So, and then Kopi, he's a big guy down there. He weighs 290. So, I mean, he's trying to carve people out of your boards. So, we just focus and make sure they keep them off the glass because we know they go to the boards hard. Uh, that's going to be a clutch for us. I mean, when you guys played in Kansas City, rotations on big men out of the pick and roll and them hitting three was an issue for you guys. What adjustments did you make that Georgie didn't really have that effect on this game? Uh, I think it was more so the off guard on the other side. They were, they were doing good on stunning, uh, making sure he couldn't get a clean look. And it was giving me and the other guys enough time to get back and get in front of Georgie. Uh, Xavier, uh, 31 to 10 edge uh, on the bench scoring. Uh, what gave your bench such a like a spark today against Illinois? Uh, I feel like it started with Javon and his energy uh, for the most part. And everybody, like Javon said, it, it doesn't matter if you're coming off the bench or starting. I mean, when Coach calls your name, you got to be ready no matter when the situation is. So I feel like we all just came in ready to play, and we was focused, and we brought the energy as well as the starters. And that gave us a good <coughs> jump. Uh, before any of the guys, can you just talk about what this win means for you, winning this back-to-back, -back, the bragging rights, especially going into this, everybody knows what Illinois has been able to do this season, knocking down a top five team. Do you consider this a statement win for your for you guys this season? Uh, for, for us, I feel like it's just bigger than us. Like I told our teammates during the huddles and stuff, it's way bigger than us. It's for our coaches and for our whole like organization, the whole Mizzou. And for us to get this win is, I mean, that's, 
just us showing our love for Mizzou. Um, to add on to that, uh, when you said like they beat top five teams, um, five five teams, uh, we didn't really worry about that. Uh, we came in here um, wanting to be the physical team. Um, we wanted to go out there and be aggressive throughout the whole game. We would, we knew our game plan. We just want to go out there and execute. We just wanted to be the tougher team. Uh, we knew we were the tougher team. Um, and so all of our guys, we want to go out there and just be aggressive. Hey, Javon talked about being the more physical team. How physical was that game, uh, you know, compared to, to maybe other you guys have played this year? We are a physical uh, team. Yeah, like Javon said, it was a physical team, but that was a very physical game. I mean, as you can see on Mississippi behalf, everything about it was physical. Uh, like Coach said, you got to be tough. And it's not about fighting or talking trash. It's about getting rebounds and getting stops and getting on the floor. And today, uh, I'm really kind of sore, so it was a very physical game. Xavier, the three ball, you've kind of been struggling with it this year. Um, three coming in. How, how good were those two big makes uh, today? Uh, uh, my coach is, does a good job of saying confidence. I mean, we all know. Well, my my teammates and my whole team know that I can shoot it. I, I just it's just up to me to put the work in, and if I put the work in, the game will fall like they did today. Javon, coach was talking in the past about Drew not necessarily always being the guy who's going to fill up the box. He was fast. Box score was scoring, but he uh, he came through with some time on baskets today. Just how important were those uh, were those points from him for you? Well, you know, Drew, that's a person you like to have on your team. He can do a lot of different things for us, like rebounding, getting assists on the defensive end, he can score the ball. So, um, you know, Drew, he went out there, he was confident, he was finding other guys. He, um, he, he found his shot like a couple times in the mid range. Uh, I think he knocked down a couple threes. So, Drew just went out there being aggressive. Um, you know, that's the type of player that we see every day in practice. So, we just know and we believe in him. So, he just went out there and did what you do. Do you think this is your best game of the season? Uh, I mean, we still got a long season to go, but yeah, so far, probably. I just been from the beginning, I, I really wanted to win this, this game for my teammates. I got a lot of guys from around this area, and I know I'm like, they want to brag, and everybody wants to brag about this game. So they kind of like channeled it into me, even though not being from here, and I really want to win this. All right. Thanks, guys. Okay. Thank you. Any questions for Coach? Thank you. What were your thoughts on Illinois going into today, and how are they different now? I don't think they're different. I mean, I think, uh, to be clear, there's no question in my mind they're an NCAA tournament team unless barring any major injuries to their key guys. Um, they can score. Uh, we have guards that can get to the rim, make plays. You have physical bigs that can make plays. Uh, we knew that we score 80 plus points a game, uh, but for us, we wanted to control the tempo. And the thing I always say to our guys is, uh, you know, we have good defensive numbers. I think we can have elite numbers if we truly took pride in playing defense and not so much playing because this is what coach requires. But understanding when you're defending elite level, you have a chance to beat anybody, truly, because if the three ball isn't falling, so it's safe to say our three ball hasn't fallen the way we'd like. So then what do we do to compensate? You rebound the basketball, offensive rebounding. You get to the rim, make plays. You get to the free throw line. All those things that are little tough things, the things that you take your heart at every, going to every game. You don't want to play a casual game. You want to be physical, you want to be tough, you want to do it without fouling. So all those things, I mean, it's still a great team in my opinion. I mean, there's no question about it. Brad has built a, a tremendous roster. you got interior guys, big guys, guards that can get to make plays. They have all those things. Uh, we just won the basketball game. Conzo, you always talk defense, rebounding, toughness. Is this as well as you've seen this team kind of translate the game plan into a game? So far, I thought we did a good job against Temple, um, especially considering the circumstances, coming off three tough ones, um, on the road against a tough team uh, with tremendous history. But yeah, I think so on this stage. I think we're doing a good job. But I still think we probably got 25% more to go defensively. I really do. Um, and, and I think we'll get there. Uh, just four points between Mark and Jeremiah. What does that say about the rest of your cast of guys that they can play pretty well offensively? You know, for me, I think, it's a, I think it's a great thing for our team because, again, the thing I always talk about, defend, rebound, and play as hard as you can play. I rarely look at the stat sheet as far as offensive production. I have to come up here and if you ask me a question, I want to be able to answer it. But I don't necessarily say, okay, Jeremiah had two points, man, it was a bad night. 
Jeremiah was questionable for us in game and playing, but he wanted to play, of course, because of the magnitude of the game. He didn't want to let his teammates down. Mark Smith, the energy in the game, that's, that's a tough thing for a young man uh, to deal with. Uh, but I, I thought he kept his composure. So it's a great win for our guys. And again, I, I don't look at it like that because I never look at the offensive stats to, to gauge a guy's production unless you got to help a guy with a shot, improve your shot, improve your ball handling, improving your post moves. But, but I, I don't get concerned with it like that. If you're playing hard, then I'm okay with it. Collins, if I remember right, Jeremiah was sick last year and almost didn't play. What, yes. what, what was it this year and, and what does this game mean? He <coughs> had yeah, an to his foot, um, uh, but, he, but he's okay. He'll be okay. I mean, with the layoff, he'll be fine. Well, the, the thing is, I, I think the difference last year, when he has the ball in his hand, he's coming down, and, he, and he's shifting with the ball as fast with it. When he's on the wing, you can identify him, and, and I think our guards are bigger, you know, so now you can kind of impose your will. I think Thomas allowed him to get a shot in the corner. That shouldn't have happened, you know, but when you, when you have size on him, you know, challenge the shot, and then take your chance with him putting the ball on the floor. Because uh, now when he puts the ball on the floor, you can corral him. But if you let him catch and shoot rhythm shots, it could be a long night. Because in my opinion, he's an elite shooter. Coach, what did you like about what you got out of your bench tonight, uh, scoring them 31 to 10? But, well, two things I like about our bench is uh, Javon and X. I mean, two guys, in my opinion, that are stars. They come off the bench, so it flows when they're, when they're on the court, so they don't skip a beat. So that part is fine. But outside of that, any production, I think read numbers won't show, but Reed does a great job with his defense, defensive positioning, understanding angles, even the movement on offense to, to, to get the ball moved from one side to the other or set a good screen. So it does a lot of things, but I get the, the point production, but I think he does a tremendous job for us. Can you explain some examples of what your team did defensively, especially in that second half, to win the game? I'm not here to, to give an example. I have to go over the scouting report to go over each play, and we had to have a film session in here. But just, you know, really, you want to keep them off the glass, first and foremost, uh, because they're an elite rebounding team. And like I said to our guys, they're the best rebounding team, and let's find out. Um, and I always say to our guys, you have to play with boxing gloves on. You know, then we'll start playing basketball. And I, I don't say it like we're fighting, but they understand what I mean. It has to be a physical game. Do it out foul. You, you have to set a tone of toughness before you step on the floor. Because I think if you walk out of the floor casual, the, re, the result will be like Charleston. You have to set a tone every time you step on the floor. Coach Conzo, you mentioned playing defense and having pride in it. How close do you think this group is to, to having consistent buy-in, not just uh, one game, then one off? Uh, I, I like wouldn't necessarily system. say buy-in like they don't want to do it, but it's just understanding but you have to understand, with, 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 with young minds nowadays, there are a lot of influences. Um, and nobody ever talks about playing defense. Nobody ever talks about you can be productive playing defense. Defense, the result of defense. That's why you admire a guy like Marcus Smart, who enjoys playing defense. He's signed a $50 million contract as an elite defender. But I think it separates you from the competition. Because if you can do that, then you can hang your hat every night. If my shot doesn't fall, I know we can rely on this. We can hold a team to 50 points. We have this. All we have to do is get 51. So, and understanding that it's not as if they, they don't want to do it, but it's just, it's never really been in my DNA to do it and understand it. And now it's just getting to understand the, the results of being an elite defensive team. This is what it can bring for you if you take pride in it. How big was it to uh, hold Georgie and Kobe to come behind six rebounds? How do you think you guys Oh, that's not easy. Uh, that's not easy, but but again, credit goes to the big guys for embracing that challenge. And even, even Mitch, I mean, Mitch going against Kofi sometimes, you know, is probably giving up, you know, 50 pounds. Uh, but he did a great job of moving his feet and high hands. Because it's not easy, it's a physical presence, and he, and he carves out space around that rim. And even if he misses a shot so close to the rim, it's hard to turn and box him out because he's so big. But then, it, that's, you know, we spend a lot of time with our guards corralling. And, and basically, when a shot goes up, they don't send everybody to the offensive glass, so they probably send two guys back. So that means the two guys for us that aren't blocking anybody out, you have to go chase that rebound down. So it's a collective effort of keeping balls alive and helping your big guys out. Coach, as a, uh, you've been around a while, how rare is this atmosphere and how cool is it? I think it's both. I think it's I think rare from the standpoint, I've said it before, that you know, we have the luxury, I, as a coach, I'm blessed to be a part of a game of this magnitude. And, and, I, and I think, I'm not sure it's the level, but when I was a player at Purdue, in Indiana, uh, but I think this is somewhat bigger because of the setting. Um, when, you, when you split split an arena down in half and you're talking two states, uh, to be able to play as a player 
for four years, sometimes five years. Uh, a, lot of, a lot of players don't get a chance to even play in a venue like this or an atmosphere like this for four plus years. So for our guys, the appreciation, I, I don't think they'll really appreciate it until they're gone. Now, you want a basketball game, great. We're going home for the break. We get away from coach, so they love all that. But the other part, when they're done playing this game, they'll understand the magnitude when they come back and see the atmosphere. Like I saw Kevin Perry out there, so just great. Former guys that, you know, out there. It's just, it's just a fun feeling, especially when you're on the winning side of it. Kyle Mitch played more minutes than anybody today by far, career high for him. What is he giving you right now? You know, again, uh, somebody might ask, is this his best game? If Mitch has more in his tank than what he showed. I mean, Mitch, Mitch is a talented player, but it goes from, you know, unsure of myself, coming off the bench, not playing, playing, starting. And eventually you'll see a different Mitch as we continue to go because his confidence will grow. And confidence is a major thing. His confidence will go to another level. He's, he's a better three-point shooter than what he's shown. He's long. You don't realize until you get up on him. He's really 6'11". So he's long and he's active. So you're not just getting shots. And he can switch four different ways on smaller guys. So he takes that away from you. I think the next step for his game is posting up. And he's done a good job of the last week or two of being physical when he posts up. Now we just have to give him the ball. You mentioned the three-game losing streak since then, three in a row. How confident are you this team's reached a point where they can repeat what they've done the last couple? Oh, if we're healthy, I, mean, I think we're as good as any team. But when you go in the SEC play, and I said it to our guys before, you have a chance to be as good as anybody. Again, on any major injuries, if you stick to the script, you have a chance to be as good as anybody in the league. That's after one or two. What did Pickett and Pinson bring your program down to? Pickett and Pinson, you know, two sophomore guys um, uh, that continue to grow and get better. I, I think both have improved their ability to lead, uh, and, and Javon more so by example. He's become more vocal as the year goes on. I think X leadership, he's probably the most vocal guy in practice. Uh, he says all the things. Uh, and the next, next challenge for X is becoming an elite on-ball defender because he has the athleticism. He has to continue with the strength piece. Uh, he has a great understanding for the game. Now, once he takes that next step as an elite on ball defender, his game will take another step. Coach, would you say maybe the defensive intensity forced Illinois to make it some errors they might not use to make it in the second half? I would think so. I mean, I mean, just like the mistakes we made, they're a good team. They made it, they forced us to X turn the ball, put pressure on X to turn the ball to us. I mean, you, you, you don't get to this point and not be good enough. I mean, both teams are good. We, somebody's coming out on top every year. And uh, I'm just grateful to be out on top this year. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Happy holidays.